Hey there, my webcrafting wizards. Do you want to up your website, add a little pizzazz to it? Today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to create a 3D parallax website with no code whatsoever using Wix Studio. So get ready and let me take you step by step on how we can create this effect. Grab an orange juice if you have. That's not orange juice. So the first step is to find an image. Now this can be anything depending what you want to do on your website. But generally speaking, you want to find images that you can cut out the foreground and the background quite easily. So for example, if we have a look at this image, this is quite hard to actually work with and add a parallax effect because it's quite flat. However, you might find an image like this where you can easily cut out the foreground, then you have a middle ground here, and you can also cut that background out to animate. So I just dropped this image into Photoshop and all I want to do is just cut out the subject so we can import it in Wix Studio. So the first step is let's kind of change up the colors first of all. So what I like to do is head over to filter and head over to camera raw filter. I'm just going to adjust some colors to make it more of my own liking. After I created my color adjustments, what I want to do is cut out the subject. So what you can do is click on the image and just do select subject and that should do an okay job. So let's have a look there and then you can press W if you want to add some more refinements. So I'm just going to select the selection tool, make this bigger and cut out everyone else and just select the subject. Now that I have the whole subject pretty much covered, what I want to do is actually grab a couple of these dirt pieces here just to add some extra because when we're going to animate the thin and zoom in, these particles are going to scale up as well. So it's just going to add more to that effect. So now that we have everything selected, we can go over here to select a mask. And as you can see, there is our selection. And actually, we don't want this guy, so let's just get rid of him. Bah! There we go. And let's do select the mask again. And that looks pretty good. What you can do is just move it out slightly, just so those edges are not that jaggy. And then the feather as well, if you just bring it up to one pixel, that should be perfect enough. And I do like to bring up the contrast and shift the edge a bit to the back. And what we're going to do is hit new layer with layer mask and OK. Perfect. So now if we take this back, it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not, because essentially we have the same background anyway. So the blending is going to be nice. All right. So let's start renaming these. So this is our background. So I'll just name it BG and this is going to be our subject. Cool. Now what I can do is actually hold control and click on the top image here. And as you can see, that's going to select my selection here. Actually, if I do it on the mask, if you do it on the layer, it just will select everything. But on the mask, it will only select this object. Cool. So now that we have the selection, we can just hide the layer, go to BG down here, and we can do select, modify, and expand. So we're going to expand this by like 25 pixels just to give it a bit of space uh, because we're essentially going to delete the subject here and we don't want little lines of pixels of like the remainders of him that was were still left over from the other picture. So we just essentially want to make sure we cover the whole subject. So expanding the mask a little bit is going to make sure that we don't mess this up. All right. And then what we're going to head over to generate the fill and I'll just say remove the motorcyclist. And there we go. The motorcyclist is completely removed. So now what we can do is just take these two layers down here and merge them together. So you can do merge layers. There we go. Let's rename this again to BG. And now if we take our motorcyclist back, we can move him off. Additionally, what you can do is just grab other uh, rocks here. So do a rock selection as well and just grab multiple ones and so, uh, separate that in its own layer as well. So now the next step is just grab all these images and right click on them and do an export as and we're going to make sure we export all of these as PNG. And that's pretty much the hard part done. Now we can just hop into Wix Studio and get this all set up. So I just have a header here with a footer on top and I'll just add a section and this is where our images are going to go. So I'm going to go to image and drag one in here and let's just change the image and upload everything that we've done. Now that we have our images, we can just grab the section, expand it a little bit like that and take this image and scale it up as well. So let's just hit this arrow here and poof, it's just going to zoom in for us automatically and scale it to the section size. We'll add the motorcyclist here. We'll scale it up and back down. 
and there we go. Now, if you can't see your image, it might be hiding in the layer here. So make sure you move it on top of the background. And there we go. It's quite small now. So let's, let's just make him a tad bit bigger like that. And as you can see, you can kind of position it anywhere because you have that rock in the foreground there. So you can just literally put it there. Cool. So we got two of our elements. We need one more. Let's also add the rocks and so we'll drag out another image change the image and pop in the rocks. Okay, cool. There it is. Scale up and scale back down to give it a reset. But how do we actually animate these now? Now let's complete this by also adding a text. So we're going to go to the plus title and we're going to say field of fury like that. Cool. I like to say that and just put it on top here. We'll increase the font size to something large, like 128. And the color can go to white. And then we can maybe do a bold like that. You can go funky with the colors if you want. If you want something a bit more intense, that black actually looks quite cool. We'll keep it. So now what we can do is just stretch this out like that and position it in the middle. The cool thing is that these layers are separated, so we can even put it behind his head like that. That looks quite cool. But how do we actually animate this? Well, we can go to the section here and go to the lightning symbol and add a animation on hover. So we're gonna click plus, we're gonna go to custom here and check this out. We have a state manager here where we can just animate uh, properties and it's going to just automatically remember them. How? Let me show you. Check this out. So initial state is like our default, right? When the page loads, that's a, that is our initial state. However, I can grab this image, for example, I can set a hundred here, hundred, right? That's the default. And as you can see, it pops up here. And if I hit play, nothing happens yet. However, if I go to animation one, and let's say I'm changing the scale to 105 here. And if I hit play now, as you can see, it does a zoom in. So it does it automatically for you, which is fantastic. Now the time is a bit too quick. So let's do 2.5 seconds hit on the enter. See like that, that's cool. And remember, we also have to do it on the initial state. So also add 2.5 seconds here. All right, and essentially we're just repeating that. We're doing the background a tad bit slower. And now with the main subject here, again, to actually have it pop up here, just write the same 100 here and it'll just boop, pop up. We'll do the same seconds, 2.5. However, we're gonna zoom in a tad bit more on our main subject. So go to animation one, we'll head here and do something like 125, cool. Let's hit play and see how that looks. So that might be a bit too much. Maybe we can reduce it to 120. And what I also like to do is just skew it a tad bit to the right, just to give it a tad bit more movement. Oh yeah, that looks cool. Uh, one more thing I want to do is maybe move this text a tad bit up. I feel like it's, it's quite down. So let's put it there. And as you can see, you can also add an effect like that. Whoop. See, because we move this up. However, on our initial state, it was still at zero. All right, so keep in mind, you can also do that. Um, we could do maybe like a two second animation on this. Let's have, let's have a look. Let's see how that looks. Two seconds, play. Oh, maybe even slower. Maybe we can just do a 2.5. We'll keep it the same. Last step is to also do it to the rock. So let's grab it in here. I'll do 2.5 seconds. We'll head over to the animation and change this to 140 or so. Make this quite big. 2.5 and let's have a look. Hit play. Okay, maybe that's a bit too much. You want to make sure it's quite subtle. Even the skew seems a bit strong. I think I'm going to be happy with 110. So that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Drop a like, drop a sub, check out Wix Studio, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.